A lot of you have come to us with questions because some, shall we say, less scrupulous sellers have been pushing cheap charging adapters that say that they are knacks but won't actually get you a charge at a supercharger. So what gives? Now, last year, when it was announced that the vast majority of automakers selling vehicles in North America would ditch the de facto non-Tesla standard, CCS1, and instead standardize on NAX, or the artist formerly known as the Tesla charging connector, incidentally, when it was actually standardized, it also got another name, J3400. You might hear it called any of those things, although NAX seems to be settling as the most common choice. There was jubilation from many quarters about how this transition would finally fix charging in the US and Canada. One standard to rule them all, as it were, just as Europe's had for more or less oh, about a decade. But transition sometimes requires more work than people think, and as folks who've bought the wrong adapter have realized, it's more than a little bit complicated. So let's clear up once and for all what's going on and what you need to supercharge your non-Tesla EV. So let's start with y'all's question. If you've got a car from an automaker that has a deal with Tesla for supercharging access and your access is all set up, will a $50 adapter you've seen on insert website name here that looks something like this let you charge at a supercharger? The answer is no. You need a rapid charging adapter from either your car's manufacturer or from a reputable supplier. But if you want to know what to look for to make sure that the thing that you get is the right thing, and why one of these might actually be useful to you anyway, well then you're going to need to hang out for a few minutes. So the CCS socket used in various formats across much of the world has two parts, which is why I'm outside, because it's just easier to show you. Up here at the top, you have the pins used for communication. So if you've ever plugged into a DC rapid charger, you'll have seen it going through communications and some checks before it starts to charge. Some of these pins are used for that, and some are used for lower power charging. The type of charging that you do when you plug in at home, where typically you plug in the car for at least a few hours and leave it to charge. And down at the bottom here, you have two chunky pins that are used for high power DC rapid charging, sometimes also called fast charging. Now, Tesla's charging connector skipped having these two extra pins and instead put some controls inside the charging circuits so it can actually use the same pins for slow charging and for rapid charging. Tesla also integrated the locking mechanism into the car rather than the handle, which is all nifty because it allows for the smaller, lighter connector that is somewhat more robust than the CCS charging connector. See, the team at Transport Evolved can, and sometimes do, say nice things about Tesla and the charging standard Tesla chose in the US. I know, I know, I'll wait for you to pick yourself up off the floor. All right, so the thing is, if you want your car to rapid charge at a Tesla supercharger, then you're going to need a connector which connects to both the pins up at the top, these ones doing the Uhura bit. I'm connecting the bypass circuit now, sir. It should take another half hour. Speed is essential, Lieutenant. Mr. Spock, I haven't done anything like this in years. If it isn't done just right, I could blow the entire communication system it's very delicate work, sir. But super importantly, it's also going to have to have connections to these pins at the bottom, because otherwise it has no way to get the electricity into the car. Also, and I want to be really clear here, you need one that's approved and appropriate. This thing is going to be transferring at least double and potentially triple figure kilowatts of power, and you want something that's not going to halt and catch fire, or dump you at the side of the charger with a guru meditation error. So the cheapest one you found on Timu is probably not the best choice. We've tested ones from A to Z EV, that's this one in my grubby little mitts, 
and Ford's own NAX adapter, they're both good choices. You can check out our comparison video up here. And I'm certain GM's own adapter is a solid choice too. You're also obviously going to need your automaker to have not only a deal with Tesla, but also to have set up whatever app or system they're requiring to charge. Which is why, despite having this handy little dongle here, I can't rock up and supercharge my Kia Nero EV. Kia have an agreement. We have adapters. But how Kia's paying for and initiating charging hasn't been made public. Oh, and you're also going to have to make sure it's a V3 or newer supercharger. That's because Tesla's older V2 superchargers can't speak the language that cars with CCS ports speak, so they won't be able to actually turn on the electrons, which is why it's important to check on the Tesla app before you go ahead and pull up at a random supercharger to plug in. All right, so if you've got one of these, you're golden, right? You can charge at any Tesla charging station. Yeah, hold your horsies there, Chirold. See, remember how I said that for low-speed charging, Teslas have control circuitry inside of them to say, oh, these charging pins, right now they're being used for low-speed stuff or for high-speed stuff. And CCS has entirely different connections in the upper bit of the socket for low-speed charging to the ones it uses for high-speed charging. Well, so far, none of the rapid charging adapters I've seen have the control circuitry or relay or indeed the extra connectors in them to do low speed charging. Which means if you want to be able to use the lower speed charging stations, officially called Tesla destination chargers, that are dotted around hotels and found in parking lots, then you're also gonna need one of these. This is a NAX to J1772 adapter and only connects into that top bit of the socket on the CCS vehicle. It allows you to plug in the NAX connector here and plugs into your charging port on the other side, but again, it will only work for low speed charging. That's true whether or not your car maker has a deal with Tesla because these low speed charging stations are often free and don't usually need the app to initialize them. Now, over the next decade or so, we're probably going to slowly see the phase out of J1772 connectors and their replacement with NAX connectors, both for low and for high speed charging. So having one or both of these is going to be increasingly important if you're charging away from home. Now, before I tap out for the day, there's one other important thing to remember, and that is if you're charging a non-Tesla at a Tesla supercharger, you might well find the cable does not reach. That's because unlike Tesla, other automakers have not had a standardized specific location for charging ports. Some enterprising folks in the comments section have suggested that you should just buy one of those fancy new supercharger extension cables that are also being advertised on various sometimes sketchy websites. Again, though, it's either misinformation or bad auto translate because the only NAX extension cables we've seen to date are designed for low speed level two destination charging using a Tesla charging connector. Those cables are designed to accommodate the low power levels that you use when you're charging slowly, and they just won't work with a Tesla supercharger connector, which could, depending on the generation of Tesla supercharger, be capable of throwing hundreds of amps at 400 or more volts down a cable. Your AliExpress special cable, even if it actually worked, which we all doubt it would, would basically vaporize under that kind of heavy current. Or perhaps it would start a campfire for you to sing around and contemplate your poor life choices. Tesla's engineers have been really specific about these too. Tesla's supercharger cables are designed with water cooling jackets to keep the cables cool while delivering hundreds of amps at hundreds of volts. And extension cables can't do that sort of thing. And if the cable doesn't reach, it's also important to know you can occupy two charging stalls. Whatever shouty Bob says at the supercharger and whatever obnoxious little notes you find on your car, Tesla has blessed the notion that non-Tesla users of the supercharger network who, 
incidentally are paying more than Tesla owners for the electrons, can occupy two spaces. It even says so on Tesla's very own website. Now, if you're a Tesla owner who doesn't like non-Teslas charging out Tesla superchargers, I would respectfully suggest that's a you problem, not a them problem. We've heard of people in non-Teslas getting passive aggressive notes on their cars and people getting the police called on them for charging at a Tesla supercharger. Luckily, it's a tiny whiny minority of rather miserable folks spoiling it for everyone else. And the majority of Tesla drivers we know are delightful. So if you are in that minority, find a new outlet for your passive aggressive anger. And if you are a non-Tesla owner who gets a nasty gram, ignore them. They have issues they should be working out with their therapist, not with you. So anyway, this is the takeaway. If you've got a car that can use superchargers with an adapter, you need something that looks like one of these with the big chunky connector at the bottom. But you might also want one of these for low speed charging because they're just handy to have around. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we will do our very best to answer them. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Alan Brim, Jim, Sarah Horlock, Full Name, Todd Johnson, Roderick, Stuart Despain, Rupert Ronson, Larry Phoenix, Dala, Wendy Kelly Budenbaum, and Kay. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. Address is also down below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!